Okay, welcome to another video. So Ubuntu have just released the latest point release of 20.04.1, which includes a lot of bug fixes and updates since version 20.04. So I'm going to focus on Kylin for this video, and the reason for that being is during the 20.04 beta period, I did check out all of the flavors, including Kylin, but Kylin wasn't quite ready for me to really check out compared to the other ones. And I always meant to do a follow-up video, but I just never got around to it. So 20.04.1 marks the perfect time for just that. So Ubuntu Kylin is intended for the Chinese market, but you can choose English in the installer. And for the most part, everything appears to be in the correct language. I have noticed one or two things that don't quite match up, but we'll get into that throughout the video. So it uses the UK UI desktop and it's version 3.0. Developed with a combination of Qt and GTK, but I think going back quite some time, it was kind of based on the Mate desktop, which is why there's still quite a few Mate applications that remain in this version. So starting off, I really like the way it looks. I know some people were slightly put off thinking that it looks a bit too much like Windows, but I think they've got that slightly wrong. I think it looks a bit more like Deepin once you get into it. So we're going to start with the control center, which is basically the settings manager for UK UI. I do have one complaint here. It would be nice to have a little search bar so you could search for a specific setting or application setting without having to hunt through the categories here. And might I just say, this looks a lot to me like the settings that you get on Windows. <clears throat> Sorry. So we're going to jump into Personalize, which includes the background, theme, screen lock, font, screensaver and desktop. And we're going to start with theme. So we have dark and light themes and it's a very nice and easy click one click and it will do it straight away and it won't matter if you've got running applications you won't need to close them and reopen them it will do it straight away which I always enjoy on a desktop environment when you don't have to close something reopen it to apply the theme so we have a couple of icon themes to choose from and for the most part classical and default look pretty similar although there's certain changes in the icon shapes for some of the icons and then basic takes quite a uniform squared approach again with rounded corners and you're going to notice the rounded corners are a bit of a theme throughout this, which is why I do get a bit of a deep in vibe from it. So if we scroll all the way down, we have the effect setting with a little performance toggle there. So if you press that, that will enable all of the transparency effects and also give you a slider. If we bring this all the way down, this is where I get the kind of deep in vibe from it. And I really like the transparency effects on here. It includes a nice little blur there. So as you can see the wallpaper behind the panel, the colors have kind of blurred and it looks a whole lot nicer. The blur does take effect across a few more things. So it works for the application launcher and of course the notification center here. And some of the UK UI specific desktop applications also do have transparent elements. So here in the files application, you'll notice in the side panel, it's transparent again with a nice blurred effect enabled. The files manager is called Pionai. I'm probably saying that terribly wrong QT. I've never used it outside of UK UI, so I think it's pretty specific to this desktop. Of course, you have a nice little tabbed interface and you can do a new folder and open terminal here with a nice little one click button there. I do quite like the files app. I do find that these are quite large though, which might be quite good for people that are visually impaired. But for me, they feel a little bit too large. Although it is very easy just to hover your mouse over there and nine times out of 10, click the right button. So it's good for that. Right, we're going to minimize this <clears throat> and talk about the panel. I really like the panel. I have a couple of complaints though, and we're going to get into them before I talk about everything that it does well. So the panel doesn't let you pin applications to it. So these are just quick launches. So if I was to open up a files app, you'll notice that it will then open up a new running application but we can't pin it. So like in KDE, for example, when you have the icon only task list, you can pin those applications and then minimize them into their own icon on the, on the panel there. And that works perfect for me. And I would like it to appear here as well. It's a minor complaint. Just think I thought I'd mention. Okay, so my next complaint goes with the pre-configured sizes. I would much prefer <clears throat> if we had some way of granularly controlling that to say a number to get it a bit smaller for small doesn't feel quite as small as I'd like it to be. Again, that's very personal. I just do quite like a smaller panel than what we can currently set. But that's all my complaints for the panel. Everything else is pretty much a win. So you can do the position top, right, left or bottom. And we have it at the bottom here. 
It looks better for me at the bottom on this particular desktop and I usually do have my panel at the top but I think it suits a bottom positioning on UK UI. So we also have the setup panel which will open up the settings and give you a couple of toggles there to add specific things to your panel like trash can and Bluetooth. So I don't have Bluetooth on this computer so we don't need to worry about that for now. So let's close that again. So we have the networks there. As you can see we are running on Ethernet. Have your volume control and then you have your notification center. I really like the notification center. Again, it reminds me of Deepin before version 20. Of course, version 20 of Deepin now has the control center not in the notifications, whereas back in the day, everything was in that side panel. So that reminds me of the control center just in the way it looks. So you have plugins here. Oh, you also have a nice little clipboard built in with a search there, which is very handy. So the plugins are quite cool. So if you open up a notebook, that will then open up a little notebook. And they're like, um, what would you call sort of like sticky, sticky notes where you can make a little note there, close it and then close that and then quit. So next up we have the show desktop button. I don't really need to explain too much, I would hope. So of course, pressing that will minimize all running applications. Pressing it again will then refocus the windows that you just minimized. So this is my favorite part of the panel is this little night mode toggle. So I know most desktop environments have some night mode function but they're not quite as convenient as just having a one click on your panel to change the temperature of your screen. I think that's very cool and very sort of convenient for a user just to press that and then boom, done. And then of course you have your clock and your calendar all there. Right, so that's the panel. What we're gonna do now is show you the application launcher before we get into the multitasking view. So I do have one complaint about the multitasking view well, it's not specifically the multitasking, it's something to do with, with it. I'll show you what I mean. So here's the application launcher. You can full screen it again, a lot like what you'd find on Deepin. And then you can separate it by alphabetical order and then just pressing a letter will then jump to that letter with whatever application start with that letter. You then have function, which is a very common just category view. Again, jumping to those categories will then include any applications that fit those categories. We can leave it on all and then go back to there. And of course we have a nice little search for feature in the top. So I personally much prefer it on the smaller setting. I wouldn't like to have a full screen application launcher. I don't think it works on desktop computers. I know some people like it personally for me. I'm not really a fan. Okay, so that's the panel and everything else. So next up we're gonna talk about this overview. So let's open a few applications. I really do like the overview though. Right, so we've got a couple of applications open here. Well, two files applications basically, and it does group them. And then if you hover over it, you can then switch to it like that. So let's jump into the overview now. So you get a very nice overview of your running applications on specific desktops. And then to the right, you have your desktop switching and you have four by default. And of course you can drag and drop windows onto those desktops or we didn't just drag them back. So my complaint isn't really about this view. <clears throat> It's about the desktop switching and not the function, more the, I'll show you what I mean. So if we go into the control center, UK control center, and we're going to jump straight into the system. No devices. Where are you? There we go. And we're going to go to shortcut. So by default, it doesn't show you all the shortcuts that are currently available, but there is a button to say show all shortcuts. So if you click that, you'll notice it doesn't say what the shortcut is for switching desktops. Now for the most people that won't matter if they've used a lot of desktop environments. I know a lot of the commonly used keyboard combinations to enable that. But for someone who's not too used to Win uh, Linuxy way of doing things, they might not think that the, uh, they <laughs> there is even an option to do it by keyboard shortcut. But there is of course, control alt, up, down, left, right. But the fact that it doesn't show you on the actual system shortcuts or even in the show all shortcuts is a bit strange to me. You'd think they'd include it considering they do include things for everything else. But that's a, a weird one for me. I wasn't quite expecting to see that there because I didn't know what it was by default. So I jumped into that thinking, oh, that would tell me and it didn't. So then I just started trying the common keyboard shortcuts. Right, let's get out of that. <clears throat> Let's get out of that. So I really like the alt tab switcher as well, actually. Let's open a few more applications. You'll notice as well, by the way, that Firefox doesn't keep the rounded corners. It mainly only applies to the UK UI applications. As you can see, the files app has got the rounded corners. 
So here is our tab switcher and it's quite nice and it gives you quite a large sort of overview of what is running in that current window. So let's go into a different workspace now and open up, let's say, Firefox on here. Like you see, we have every single application and it doesn't matter what workspace it's on. So it gives you the window spread across all workspaces and then switching to that current window within go to the workspace that it's currently assigned to which isn't too bad i don't mind it right let's get out of that and let's get out of that so i did mention about the english support and for the most part you'll notice that everything does have the correct english sort of language support there however one thing i did notice during my brief time before this video is the kylin software center doesn't have english for every application or well, for most applications, you'll notice that a lot of it is in Chinese. GIMP does have it there, and then it does have some Chinese next to it. So for the most part, you're probably going to want to avoid the software center if you're an English speaker, because it might be hard getting what application is which. However, it does appear that most English applications do have the correct naming there. But to avoid all of that, it might just be worth installing Synaptic Package Manager, which I have done off camera just to make sure it all works and of course you can manage your applications in here if you want a GUI or you could just use apt in the terminal as you can see down here we have 1877 installed all I have installed so far is synaptic and htop so you're looking at about 1700 plus applications that are fresh install we're currently using 1.79 GB of RAM no swap and CPU looks okay to me for the most Part. you'll notice that the terminal is the Mate terminal and again no rounded corners on that so let's close that now and let's see what actual applications you do come installed with I have noticed there is no LibreOffice the office applications that it comes with are WPS now I'm not too well versed in WPS so I can't speak on how good of a sort of office suite of applications it is you do have to agree to Kingsoft's office software license agreement some formula systems might not be displayed correctly due to missing fonts. Okay, that's not too much of a worry. So let's go into a new document and see what this looks like. Okay, so it has quite a Windowsy kind of feel. Doesn't have the English dictionary by default from what I can tell. Let's close that. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, in the software store, the Ubuntu Kylin software store, you'll notice, I think they do cater to people that are used to windows for certain programs it will like have a icon for a commonly used windows application oh here it has windows substitute its own category and then like you can see for microsoft office it will then have an application that corresponds to it like a linux alternative next to it which is pretty cool to be fair so what are some of these application so instead of outlook it recommends thunderbird which appears to be installed so i'm going to imagine that is our default email client so what we're going to do now in is just go through any other applications that we might have. So Kyle in video, passwords. I did notice a, let's type in Kyle in. I noticed a, there we go, Kyle in assistance. So what do we have here? Right, so it appears to be like a sort of cleanup program that will clean system files and cache and cookies and things like that. So a bit like bleach bit might do. So let's go to start clean and see what that does. Complete, there we go, that was pretty clear, pretty quick. So zero, his, zero historical use, cleanable cookies, didn't really appear to do too much there at all. So we should have a nice clean computer. The fan is working fine, drive. Okay, so this shows you all your drivers, the so sound card, wired, oh, well, that's not too bad to have all in one application to be fair. And then that will tell you about the system. So we're using kernel version 5.4.0-42, 64-bit. And then we have some toolkits. So here again is your Kylin Software Center Shred Manager. What's this then? It's just like a file shredder to delete files. I'm going to imagine that's what it is. Let's get out of that. And then again, we've showed the system monitor there as well. So let's go into resources. And as you can see, there is your resources. Right, I've noticed the screenshot appears to work all well and good, and this is also the Mate screenshot application, I do believe. There we go, so this is Mate screenshot is what it's using for your screenshotting. So let's close that, and let's close that. Is there anything else I want to look at in the applications? 
So again, cheese, discs, rhythm box is your default music player, shot well. So let's go into the settings now and see what is set up for our preferred applications. Here we go. So what do we have here? We'll go through this update backup thing as well because that looks quite interesting. So maybe system. There we go, default app. Oh, auto boot as well. So here's all of your auto starting applications. So for example, I don't have Bluetooth, so we can get rid of that. I don't really mind have it. I don't really need weather. We'll get rid of that. Um, yeah, we'll leave that as it is. Right, so the default applications, what have we got? Of course, Firefox is your web browser. Mail is Thunderbird. Image view is Firefox. It always makes me laugh when a, a distribution or a desktop has the web browser as your default image viewer, especially when there is actually an image viewer installed. Very strange. Right, that's now set to shot well. Rhythm box is your audio player. And then Kylin Video. So let's check out what Kylin Video looks like. I'm going to imagine it also has the rounded corners, much like all of the other UK UI applications. It does, and it's a very dark colored application. So it doesn't appear to have any settings for the dark setting or the light setting in the theming. So let's jump back into the theming. And let's go on to home, personalization, and of course, let's see what these other wallpapers are like as well. Where have they gone? Oh, our wallpapers have disappeared. Ah, oh, there they've gone. Um, let's try that. Oh, I like that. What's the... Ah, nice. So you get a nice little 20.04 wallpaper. I think that's pretty nice. Right, let's leave it on the default for now, which was... Oh, God, it was that, wasn't it? Okay, so some of the other settings we have screen lock, and it's just screen lock, fonts, screen saver. So you, the screen saver, I notice this, I've turned it up to 30 because it was by default five minutes. You get like a little quote of the day kind of thing. So that one's currently showing you can't change the past. I've also experienced ones about meadows and things like that, which uh, I'm not complaining to be honest with you. So in theming wise, let's see if changing the theme to dark does anything to Kylin Video. No, so Kylin Video is just a very dark painted application by default as it appears. Right, I'm going to check out a couple more things in the settings. Then we're going to do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and then we're going to wrap it up there. But I really do like Ubuntu Kylin as just a desktop environment. So the UK UI, I think it's a very pleasant desktop to actually just look at and play around with. So update backup. Right, so system update. Let's check for an update. So that opens up the Ubuntu software updater. Finished. It probably hasn't found anything. Software is up to date, perfect. So it has a built-in backup tool here. Do we have Deja installed or is this Lich? No, okay, so it's us. It's the same thing. Let's begin a backup. Okay, now that is Deja Dup, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so the backup it uses is Deja Dup. It just has a nice little front for it here. And you can also begin restore all from here as well. That's pretty cool. Is there any applicate settings that we want to check out before we do a nice little reboot? So in network, you have VPN and proxy, date and time area, messages, what's in here? Notice settings, so is this for the notifications? Yep, it appears to be. Anything else I want to check out? Here's the display settings. This is where I set up the mirror display and unified outputs. No. Okay, cool. We're going to do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and then wrap it up there. But that's been my final look at Ubuntu Kylin so far. Okay, we're back in business. So we're currently using 800 megabytes of RAM at boot. It's not the lightest desktop we've had on the channel. However, we have enabled like all the flans, fancy flashy effects and stuff in the um, theming settings there. Anyway, that's been Ubuntu Kylin 20.04.1. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There's a link in the description below. See you on the next one. Bye bye.